that. The one consistent message that we have heard is to keep your distance and wash your hands. Totally get that. Masks is not settled science. I think that's pretty well clear to say. So let's uh, continue then. Now that I've put that on the table, you can look it up yourself. But I think the most important thing is how then do, does this play into the legality of what the city of Calgary has done? John Carpe is president of the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms, and he has uh, issued a press release saying making face masks mandatory is not backed by science or law. Now, I wanted to deal with the first part. Part, just so that we could get into the legal aspects of it. If you think I have missed anything about the issue of whether a face masks are, are endorsed by science, maybe you can fill in some blanks for me, John. Well, the science, the science is not settled. So the, the headline in the post-millennial column is mandatory masks not backed by science or law. So no, I'm not saying that it's you know, conclusively unscientific or useless. I'm saying that the, the debate is raging and uh, you know, as recently as June, the World Health Organization stated uh, that that there's nothing uh, conclusive. There's no conclusive scientific evidence to suggest that mandatory mask wearing or or mask wearing generally is going to reduce the spread of COVID. They said this in June, and it's it appears to be more of a, a political move to, um, uh, to to have all these mask wearing bylaws now. And my biggest question would be, why not in March and April? If the science really was settled, that's when we were trying to flatten the curve. And why now? So is there is there some validation to that argument that they really were just trying to prevent a, a rush on these masks? Well, yes and no. It depends on whether they were talking about the everybody trying to get a hold of a, a proper medical mask, which I'm told is not effective unless it's, you know, personally tailored to you and you're putting it on properly and you've been trained on how to put it on. I I don't know if we were talking three months ago about medical masks or non-medical masks, uh, but where we're at now with the bylaw is, you know, just a piece of cloth that's going to uh, depersonalize you and dehumanize you and make you anonymous by covering half of your face. So... I mean, it's a fair point, but I don't know if if um, if people back in March were necessarily distinguishing between medical and non-medical masks. Let me put one more argument on the table. It's that because I keep getting people texting me saying, "Oh no, but they're they're improving um, their understanding that that it's over this period of time we've we've done more science and we've realized that they are helpful, whereas we didn't know that a few months ago." What do you think of that argument? <laughs> Well, I think it's very convenient, but whoever was raising it, uh, my question would be, okay, so show me the conclusive, uh, or conclusive, show, show me the studies and reports and data and so on that has emerged in the last two or three months, scientific reports that have emerged in the last two or three months that um, are uh, backing up this uh, change in public policy. We got no freedom left. Okay, let's talk about seatbelts um, because this is the analogy a lot of people say is that um, it's seatbelts are mandatory. So I'm curious to know would you would you argue that there is an exception and why, or would you say yeah, but people shouldn't have seatbelt laws either? Tell me which which direction you go on that. My understanding, and I have not researched it, is that there's a lot of very credible research uh, showing that the wearing of seatbelts will reduce death or will reduce the severity of an injury when car accidents happen. Uh, I have not read up on that, but uh, I would say if if that's true, that, there, that there's a very strong scientific basis, then um, uh, th- that would make it a, a different comparison. And there's also something uh, about, you know, it's temporary while you're driving a car, whereas this mask wearing I mean, yes, it's also temporary. You don't have to wear it inside your own house, but uh, you have to wear the mask a lot more than than uh, than what what you do uh, a seatbelt in a car. Okay, let's talk about John Carpe and this uh, idea that science needs to settle like it was sugar in his iced coffee. This is such a stupid idea. Science doesn't settle. Science is not going to stop. This is and it it's just completely ridiculous that that. Daniel Smith and John Carpe think that science works like this. It's just ridiculous. So let's get into who this guy is. This is John Carpe. This is him, I guess. And uh, let's talk about, you know, 
what he does. And in a sense, he is a lawyer. That's his, that's his qualifications to, to, uh, to speak uh, about COVID and related subjects is this guy is a lawyer and he has opinions about freedom or whatever, uh, or what he thinks freedom is. And he thinks masks don't work because uh, he likes freedom or some bullshit like that. So he wrote this article in this trash website called the, the Post Millennial. And it says making mat face mask mandatory is not backed by science or law. And he needed to post this in the Post Millennial because every other news organization would have did a cursory reading of the, what he's s citing and realized that it's all a bunch of bullshit. So let's get into, he makes two key points in this, in this article and let's go over each one. So the first one, he says, Carpe saying, one study say, states that cloth masks pose a 13% increased risk of influenza-like illness infection to those wearing them, noting that moisture retention, reuse of cloth masks, and poor filtration may result in an e increased risk of infection. So this is the NIH-linked uh, study. It's hosted on the NIH website, at least. And let's read this study, right? Let's look, let's look at the study. Uh, see what they did to find that cloth masks don't work. So this is the study uh, published by Rainia McIntyre. Um, and the study was done on health, uh, using healthcare workers in, in Vietnam and, and they segmented the, it in three groups. But remember that name, Rainia McIntyre. Let's, but this is published in 2015 and let's go over what they did. So from the eligible wards, uh, uh, they had about 1,900 healthcare workers, um, and this is interesting. Uh, they were segmented in three arms. Number one, medical masks at all times in the work shift. Number two, cloth masks at all times on shift. Or three, the control arm, which was standard practice, which was may or may not include mask use. And then read this sentence from the study. Standard practice was used as control because the Institutional Review Board deemed it unethical to ask participants to not wear a mask. So every single group in the study was wearing a mask, either all the time, some of the time, or, or like they were wearing masks on the job, uh, but they did not force them to wear a cloth mask all the time. So let's go over this, right? Group one wore medical masks continually group or group two i screwed up this slide wore cloth masks consider consist completely and then the control group did what they did usually did which meant they typically wore masks maybe they took them off a little more often or or what but not, none of these groups did not have wear masks right so you can see this by looking at the studies that cite this study right, from 2020, right? So here's a review of cloth masks in, with COVID-19 from Catherine Clace, um, and she references this study by Rainia, um, and what does she say? So um, a single randomized controlled trial, trial of cloth masks studied in an unusually an unusually inefficient mask and compared it with medical masks rather than no mask. For influenza-like illness, the attack rate in healthcare workers wearing cloth masks was 2.3% compared to 0.7% in healthcare workers' medical masks, as indicated, and 0.2% in the group wearing medical masks continuously. Here, th this is the point. This trial has been misinterpreted as showing that cloth masks increase risk for influenza-like illness, but it actually provides no evidence on the effectiveness or harms of wearing cloth masks compared to not wearing cloth masks because it had no comparator group without masks. Again, they said it was unethical to ask healthcare workers to not wear a mask, so they didn't ask them to not wear a mask. That's how ridiculous this reference is. And then this next point, and this is interesting and later, furthermore, Filtration efficiency for the cloth masks used in the study was 3%. I don't know exactly what that means, but we can get into that discussion in a moment. So let's see who else cited this 2015 study. Oh, it turns out that this author of the study uh, published a 
rapid systematic review of the efficacy of face masks and respirators against coronaviruses and other respiratory transmiss transmissible viruses for the community, healthcare workers, and sick patients. In 2020, she published this paper, right? She's from the University of New South, South Wales. So let's see uh, um, what she says. A trial we conducted in Vietnam of two layered cotton cloth masks compared to medical masks showed that a lower rate of infection in the medical mask group and 13 times, higher, 13 times higher risk of infection in the cloth mask arm. The study suggests cloth masks may in, increase the risk of infection, but may, but may not be generalizable to all homemade masks. The material design and adequacy of cloth masks may have been a factor. So this is a study that she's publishing in April. Um, there have been no randomized controlled trial of cloth masks published at this time, but if any pr protection is offered by these, it would be less than, than even a medical mask. So she's saying that what mask you wear matters and what mask they use was not very good. So let's go on to the blog post that she writes. Cloth mask wearers had higher rates of infection than even the control arm. The mask used in the study was one used commonly in hospitals in Vietnam. The study site was manufactured locally in Vietnam, made of a cotton or cotton polyester mix, and it had two layers. The medical mask was a disposable single-use product made in Vietnam. Some subjects in the control arm wore a medical mask, which have been, may have reduced the apparent performance of cloth masks compared to the control group. However, in the post hoc analysis presented in the 2015 RCT of all uh, cloth and medical mask wearers, the higher rate of infection in cloth mask users persisted. Other reasons cloth masks may have performed badly include long duration of use and frequency of and type of washing and cleaning. Uh, cloth may have became become damp and contaminated, pos posing an infection and self-contamination risk if not washed daily before reuse. A medical mask, in contrast, has a fluid-resistant outer layer designed to prevent a stream of liquid entering the mouth. Cloth fabrics may also vary in quality. Ideal properties of cloth masks include hydrophobic material, at least three layers, good fit around the face, and good particle filtration. Cloth masks made of cotton, gauze, silk, or woven uh, have been used in the, since the early 20th century to prevent healthcare workers from various respiratory infections. Cloth masks have one or multiple layers. Most have strings or ties. However, cloth masks using community settings generally have ear loops. Cloth masks do not have a, a, a flexible nose piece, piece, piece to filter over the nose bridge. Homemade masks from a cotton t-shirt material may also provide a good fit and a measurable, and this is key, a measurable level of protection of a from a challenge aerosol, right? So this is something that was written in in um, April, and the study, the person that published the study in 2015 that John Carpe, Carpe is re referencing, is saying very good things about a mask you could make with a t-shirt. But it continues, as COVID pandemic, as COVID-19 pandemic grows globally, a universal face mask use has also become a topic of discussion. And then she continues, the CDC has re recommended cloth masks used by community members. However, the WHO has not. Um, the WHO recommended, and this is from April, uh, the, the mask use in the community has no benefit, not only should be used by sick patients. In general, the results of community uh, randomized controlled trials show protection for well community members in settings of intense transmission, such as household and university campus settings. In trials that study mixed interventions, such as high hand hygiene, health education, and masks, masks were more, more effective than hand hygiene alone. Hand hygiene alone was not protective, and both together are protective. It would be timely to collect data on universal mask face mask use adjusting for other disease control measures and study whether the strategy can ease social isolation and allow an earlier return to employment. Like this is the whole point. Maybe masks help us get to back to work sooner. Um, it is essential that community members be provided with guidelines on best fabrics and design for homemade masks as the filtration of different fabrics varies widely. There is enough evidence, and this is in April, this published on April 9th, right? And she's saying 
there is enough evidence that in, in the settings where COVID-19 is poorly controlled and there is few other options, that universal face mask use in households and crowded public places might make a difference to individual protection and population disease control. Done deal. This is from April. And now what is what is what is the study author saying right now? Right? It's now July, right? So New University of New South Wales professor Rainer, Rainer McIntyre says manor, mandatory masks may make the difference be, between minimizing community transmission and going down the same path as Victoria, which is a neighboring state. And we continue, New South Wales should mandate ma face masks in public to avoid going to, down the same route as Victoria, a leading epidemiologist says. University of South, New South Wales professor Rainer McIntyre said there was a real risk um, of more community transmission across New South Wales and was being detected and called for the adoption of face masks. Preemptive measures such as face masks early should be used in New South Wales, Professor McIntyre said. The earlier you use it, the more effective you will be. This is July. So in April, the study author was saying good things. And in July, uh, saying good things about cloth masks. And in July, the study author is emphatically saying that it should be mandated in, in, in their state. And okay, so th th so that's enough of the the point that Carpe is trying to make about this Vietnam study. Then Carpe is citing uh, uh, this WHO guideline uh, from June 5th, 2020. A WHO guideline from June 5th, 2020. At present, there is no direct evidence from studies on COVID-19 healthy people in the community on the effectiveness universal masking of healthy people in the community to prevent infection with re respiratory viruses in including COVID-19. At the present time, the widespread use of masks by healthy people in the community setting is not yet supported by high quality or direct scientific evidence and their prevention and benefits and harms to consider. So here's the cited guideline, right? So you can click on the link. And then if you look at the full quote, right? So, so here you go. Here's the full quote. Many countries have recommended the use of fabric mask face coverings to the general public. At the present time, the widespread use of Masks in the healthy people in the community setting is not yet supported by high quality evidence. And then the second paragraph says, however, taking into account the available studies evaluating pre and asymptomatic transmission, a growing compendium of observational evidence on the use of masks by the general public in several countries, individual values and preferences, as well as the diff difficulty of physical dis distancing in many, many contexts, the WHO has updated its guide, guidance to advise that to prevent COVID-19 transmission effectively in areas of community transmission, governments should discourage the general public, should, should encourage the general public to wear masks in specific situations and settings as part of a comprehensive approach to suppress SARS-CoV-2 transmission. So the WHO created an entire website about how to wear a mask and where to wear and who should wear them? And the answer is, everyone should wear them in different contexts. Uh, and it's quite clear that uh, John Carpe quote mined this particular report to say something that the WHO is not actually saying. The WHO is saying that there hasn't been a population controlled sample trial of masking, like universal masking. But as we saw in the 2015 study in Vietnam, it would be unethical to perform a trial that asks people to not wear masks when we have reasonable evidence that uh, decent filtration happens in a good, with a decently made mask. So let's go over what this means, right? All it means is use a quality cotton and don't keep it around, keep it on your face around the house all day like a dumbass. Like we know that it prevents sick people from spitting virus all over the supermarket, right? So if you're pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic, mostly pre-symptomatic people carry it or are spreaders. Like if you might not feel sick today, but you're going to feel sick tomorrow. Um, wear a mask at the supermarket. Don't leave that shit in public. And yeah. And also wear a fucking seatbelt. This is not like, I don't know what is so confusing about this? Just wear a fucking seatbelt. 